All right, so now that we've gotten the basic DC biasing transistors out of the way, we're going to fin figure out the DC bias for the input stage consisting of transistors Q1 through Q7, the second stage consisting of the Darlington pair Q16 and Q17, and finally the output stage consisting of Q23, Q14, and Q20. So we'll begin with the input stage. The input stage, we note that we have our reference current of 19 microamps that flows through Q9, and the same current will flow through Q8. So we can say that IA is equal to I9, which is equal to 19 microamps, and that that current gets split evenly between I1 and I2. So we see a total current of 9.5 microamps flowing through I1 and I2. Now, finally, we want to find the current I3 that flows through resistor R3, and to do so, we need to know what the voltage drop is across the base to emitter junction of Q5. To do so, we can find VBE5 is equal to VT times the natural logarithm of I5, which is equal to I1, divided by the saturation current for this transistor. And we know that the saturation current for this transistor is due to the process, and it's equal to 5 femtoamps. Substituting appropriate values, we find that VBE is equal to 555 millivolts. We can find the base voltage by adding the emitter voltage to the base to emitter voltage. So we have VB5 is equal to VBE5 plus I1 times R1, which is equal to 565 millivolts. I3 now is equal to VB5 divided by R3, which is equal to 11.3 microamps. So now we know the current flowing through all these transistors. We'll make one note that you see the nulling terminals here, and if we want to cancel offset voltages, the way we would do that is place a potentiometer and ground the wiper of the potentiometer across the terminals of the op amp. And what this allows us to do is dynamically adjust, or at least statically adjust, the size of R1 and R2 so that we can cancel any offsets that arise due to mismatches between any of the transistors and any of the resistors in the process. So now we need to find the biasing of the second stage. So we go to the second stage and recall that the current flowing through Q13B was 550 microamps. And so we can find that all of that current flows through Q17, and hence we can find the base to emitter voltage for 17. It's equal to Vt times Ln of 550 microamps divided by 5 femtoamps. Vb17 is equal to Vbe17 plus the emitter voltage, which is equal to R8 times 550 microamps, which yields 716 millivolts. Now we know what the voltage at the base of Q17 is, hence we can find IR9. IR9 is equal to VB17 divided by R9, which is equal to 14.3 microamps. We know what the base current flowing into Q17 is because we know what the collector current flowing into Q17 is. So we know IB17 is equal to 550 microamps divided by beta, which is equal to 2.2 microamps. 
we're assuming that the beta for an NMOS er, for an NPN transistor in this process is 250, and for a PMOS we will use 50. Now we know that I16 is equal to the sum of the currents flowing into the resistor R9 and the base of transistor 17. So we can say I16 is equal to IR9 plus IB17, which is equal to 16.5 microamps. All right, one more stage to go, looking at the output stage now. We see we have the 180 microamps that flows from Q13A into the diode connected transistors Q18 and Q19. So we can write here that VBE18 is equal to I19 times R10, which is equal to Vt times the natural logarithm of I18 divided by 5 femtoamps, which is our saturation current for an NPN device in this process. Now we also note that the sum of the currents flowing into I19 and I18 has to equal 180 microamps. So we can say I18 plus I19 is equal to 180 microamps. Solving these equations yields I18 is equal to 164 microamps and I19 is equal to 15.7 microamps. Now we'll note that we have a VBE drop from this node up to this node and then one more VBE drop and we note that because resistors R6 and R7 are small the VBE drops for Q18 and Q19 are approximately equal to the VBE drops of Q14 and Q20. So we can say VBE 18 plus VBE 19 is approximately equal to VBE 14 plus VBE 20. Now if we substitute our expressions for VBE in terms of the current, we can write the following expression I18 times I19 divided by I S 18 times I S 19 is approximately equal to I 14 times I 20 divided by I S 14 times I S 20. This involves some manipulation of the logarithms involved in, in, in these expressions, but you should be able to find uh, this expression fairly easily. Now we note that the saturation currents for 14 and 20 are slightly different than the saturation currents for the rest of the transistors because these are output stage transistors and so they're engineered slightly differently. We'd find that IS14 is approximately equal to 14 or 4.5 times the IS that we've been using of 5 femtoamps. And we know IS20 is approximately equal to 10 femtoamps. We note that this is different because it's a PMOS device. So if we work through everything we can find that I14 is equal to I20 which is equal to 150 microamps. So now we know the DC currents through all the transistors and hence we can find the small signal parameters for all of the transistors in the circuit. And we'll go about doing that and finding what the gain and input and output resistance for the 741 op amp are in the next set of slides.